Hi and welcome to ATC Keep Educating Yourself series. This lecture is about airborne collision avoidance system. In the early days of aviation the separation between aircraft was solely achieved by visual means. See and avoid. The pilot looked outside in order to detect other aircraft and if a threat was detected. They would then undertake an avoidance maneuver. Today, pilots still scan the airspace around their aircraft not only when wholly responsible for their own separation, but also when separation is provided by air traffic control. See and avoid is still applied successfully on countless occasions every day. Admittedly, at the speeds flown by commercial jets the chances of a successful avoidance maneuver as a result of visual acquisition can be quite low. Over the years, air traffic has continued to increase. Over the course of the next 10 years, the global commercial aircraft fleet is expected to double. The developments of modern air traffic control systems have made it possible to cope with this increase whilst maintaining the necessary levels of safety. Ground-based air traffic control ATC, which is responsible for keeping aircraft separated. Despite technical advances in ATC systems, there are cases when the separation provision fails due to a human or technical error. Any separation provision failures may result in an increased risk of a mid-air collision. Airborne Collision Avoidance System is a system designed to reduce the incidence of mid-air collisions with other aircraft. Currently, TCAS-2 is the only implementation that meets the acas icau standards and recommended practices. Therefore, the term ACAS-2 is typically used when referring to the concept, and TCAS-2 when referring to the implementation. However, often both terms are used interchangeably. The Airborne Collision Avoidance System is an aircraft system based on secondary surveillance radar transponder signals, which operate independently of ground-based equipment. To provide advice to the pilot on potential conflicting aircraft that are equipped with secondary surveillance radar transponders. The International Civil Aviation Organization prescribes that an airborne collision avoidance system must be installed and operational for all aircraft heavier than 5,700 kg and for all aircraft authorized to transport more than 19 passengers. Three types of airborne collision avoidance system have been specified in ICAO Annex 10. A CAS-1 provides information as an aid to see and avoid action but does not include the capability for generating resolutionary advice. A CAS-2 provides vertical resolution advisory in addition to traffic advisory. A CAS-3 provides vertical and horizontal resolution advisory in addition to traffic advisory. A CAS-3 is unlikely to materialize due to difficulties which the conventional surveillance systems have with horizontal tracking and, consequently, issuing horizontal avoidance maneuvers. The commercially available implementations of ICAO standard for a CAS-2 are TCAS-2 version 7 and 7.1. TCAS version 7, one logic can issue a reversal resolution advisory to the aircraft which maneuvers in accordance with the resolution advisory. TCAS-2 is an aircraft system based on secondary surveillance radar transponder signals. TCAS-2 interrogates the mode C and mode S transponders of nearby aircraft called intruders and from the replies tracks their altitude and range and issues alerts to the pilots as appropriate. TCAS-2 works independently of the aircraft navigation, flight management systems, and air traffic control ground systems. TCAS-2 cannot detect non-transponder aircraft. TCAS-2 monitors the airspace around the aircraft and communicates with all traffic equipped with a corresponding active transponder. Queries all surrounding aircraft on the frequency 1030 MHz. And each aircraft transponder replies on the frequency 1090 MHz. The TCAS system builds a three-dimensional map of aircraft in the airspace, includes the range determined from the interrogation and response round trip time, altitude as reported by the interrogated aircraft, and bearing by the directional antenna from the response.
Then, by extrapolating current range and altitude difference to anticipated future values, it determines if a potential collision threat exists. It warns pilots of the presence of other transponder-equipped aircraft which may present a threat of mid-air collision. It can simultaneously track up to 30 aircraft within a nominal range of 14 nautical miles for mode A, C targets and 30 nautical miles for mode S targets. Traffic advisory are nominally generated 20 to 48 seconds prior to the predicted closest point of approach. Resolution advisory are nominally generated 15 to 35 seconds prior to the predicted closest point of approach. The closest point of approach is the instant at which the slant range between own TCAS to equipped aircraft and the intruder is at a minimum. Pilots are required to comply with all resolution advisory, even if the resolution advisory are contrary to ATC clearance. In this case, the controller is no longer responsible for separation of the aircraft involved in the resolution advisory. The display of a traffic and resolution advisory is accompanied by an audio alert like traffic, traffic, climb, climb, increase descent, maintain vertical speed to inform the crew that a traffic advisory or resolution advisory has been generated. Once the intruder is no longer a threat, TCAS will announce clear of conflict. Loss of required minimum in-flight separation of aircraft, which is known as airprox and altitude deviations from air traffic control clearances by flight crews, which is known as level busts, result in serious harm either from a mid-air collision or from collision with the ground. However, the actions of air traffic management can reduce chances of a level bust occurring and can have an important effect on the outcome. Lessons from several safety occurrences which recommends to use standard phraseology to ensure clear and unambiguous pilot controller communications. Use of full call signs reduces the potential for call sign confusion. Never emit call signs in a transmission and never combine a frequency change with any other clearance. Insist on full readback after issuing a clearance, Roger, is not a satisfactory alternative. Listen carefully to the readback and correct any error or apparent misunderstanding of an instruction. Do not use readback time to carry out other tasks. If a blocked transmission is suspected, ensure that both aircraft retransmit their messages and confirm carefully that a clearance has not been taken by an aircraft for which it was not intended. Do not issue avoiding action following notification that an aircraft is responding to ATCAS resolution advisory. Airborne collision avoidance systems is instrumental in reducing risks associated with airborne conflicts. Currently, this role is fulfilled by TCAS 2 and a new generation of airborne collision avoidance systems, a CAS 10, is being developed which will be made available for commercial use by the end of 2020. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time till then take care of yourself. Bon journey.